Hello, I'm back with another video here on my 8-bit breadboard computer, the Ben Eater inspired 8-bit breadboard computer, the SAP1 Simple as Possible computer. It's uh, been 239 days since I last posted a video on uh, my version of the computer here. And the reason I've been away for so long, uh, primarily um, I'm what's called a non-traditional college student, which means that I'm not college age, but I am in college and um, I've just been very busy with classes. Now, I haven't actually worked on this computer at all in, in really the last uh, 239 days or, you know, give or take. But it's been on my mind a lot lately, and I have one problem that has persisted with this computer that I've never been able to resolve. So I wanted to make another video and talk about that a little bit. So let me reset some things here, and I'll show the problem and I'm hoping that somebody else who has worked on this uh, might have some tips and tricks for me. The uh, last couple of times I've posted videos with problems, I've had pretty good success with getting help from the YouTube community. So let's try that again. Okay, I've zoomed in on the part of the breadboard computer where I'm having my problem, and that is here with the RAM. The issue is that when I switch out of programming mode and I go into run mode, and then I go back into programming mode, whichever address is, is uh, selected on the dip switches will uh, essentially get spontaneously overwritten with uh, sometimes it's the same data that is currently chosen on the dip switches, but that's not quite the issue because I've also noticed that it won't necessarily match the data that's on the dip switches, so it's kind of an odd problem. So let me go ahead and demonstrate this issue and then hopefully somebody can see this and give me some ideas. So let me go into programming mode. And currently I have selected uh, memory address location one. And in order to make this a little bit easier to understand, what I will do is at memory address location one, I will write in a binary one. I think that'll make everything easier. So we're gonna write that in. So memory address location one has a binary one. And then I'm gonna to go to memory address location two. And at memory address location two, I'm gonna write in binary two. And one more, we'll go to memory address location three and we'll write in a three. So that's easy to understand. Memory address location one has a one, memory address location two has a two, memory address location three has a three. So let's say that we're done with our program. We go into run mode. We're stepping through, we're happy. Maybe it's running correctly, maybe it's not, but either way, we decide to go back into programming mode and check some things out. So I'm gonna go back into uh, programming mode and currently at memory address location three, I have a three, so I'm happy. But then I'm going to sort of start stepping through my program. I'm gonna go back to memory address location one and at memory address location one, I have a one. So I'm happy, I think everything is great. And then I'm gonna go to memory address location two, and at memory address location two, I have a two, so everything is, is excellent. And then I'm gonna go to memory address location three, and I still have a three. So far, so good. So let's go back to memory address location one. We check, everything's good. So I'm gonna switch out of programming mode at this point into run mode. We step through our program again, we check some things out, then we go back into uh, programming mode. And now you can see that just the act of switching back into write mode from run mode has caused a binary three to get written at memory address location one. That shouldn't be happening. Now, <clears throat> it seems pretty clear that because I have a binary 3 currently set on the dip switches, that's why a binary 3 got written to memory address location 1. There does seem to be a correlation there, but I have noticed that that cannot be uh, completely relied on. So, for example, let's, let's uh, again, watch that I'm never touching the uh, the right button and I know somebody's gonna comment and they're gonna say well I got a loose wire somewhere that that's not the case I've gone through this very carefully so I'm gonna go out of programming mode 
into run mode, and I'm going to go back into programming mode, back and forth, back and forth. So it seems like, you know, it's not just spontaneously writing any old random data in there. It's just whatever is selected on the on the dip switches. But I have seen, let's, uh, for example, let me set another number. So instead of three, I've brought up the third least significant bit. So now we, now we have a seven. So if I go out and in, you'll notice nothing changed. But there, just kind of randomly the second time, it picked the data that was set on the dip switches and wrote it for no particular reason. So let's, uh, let's just set another bit. Let me take the most significant bit. Out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. I think I can do this forever. And I've noticed, for whatever reason, the most significant bit will never actually trigger memory address location one, at least, to pick up that data. But the second most significant bit sometimes will. So if I go out, in, out, in, out, in, it's kind of random. So you can see how many times did I flip that. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at the video count. But eventually, the data that was set on the dip switches, except for the most significant bit, oddly enough, got written into memory address location one just by switching back and forth between programming mode and run mode. So that's the nature of the problem. I think I've pretty well demonstrated what's going on there. So I'm hoping that somebody... Um, has hopefully already experienced this and solved it, that would be ideal. So uh, yeah, let me know. Uh, leave comments in the comment section and give me your thoughts.